are you new to die cutting or have you maybe been die cutting for a little while and you've not quite fallen in love with the process yet it may be that you'll find this video handy because I'm going to cover lots of tips and tricks for you to allow you to get the very most out of your dies and your die cutting machine now these tricks are going to cover both manual and electronic machines so you can use them for either my very first top tip is a really simple one and that's just to keep everything clean. The cleaner your plates, the cleaner your dies, the better possible cut you're going to get. Um, as you can see, plates over time will mark and that's absolutely natural. They'll also bow a little bit as well, so it's well worth just flipping your plates, each, or certainly your top plate, each time you use it, just to keep it as straight as possible. But what we also get into our plate is little bits of paper embedded, so it's worth worth you taking a brush or um, a scrubbing sponge just from the washing up bowl, a little bit of water maybe if you need to, to just scratch away some of these excess pieces of paper. You can do this maybe every um, couple of weeks, you don't have to do it all the time, but if you are going to be die cutting a large piece of paper and you can see you've got little bits sitting in here, you're going to want to remove these because they are going to embed into your paper as you cut, giving you a less than clean finish on the planar pieces that are not cutting. So not only do you need to clean your plates regularly but you also need to do the same with your dies. So for example I've still got some pieces of paper left inside this die cut from a previous project that I was doing so I just need to take a pokey tool and press through the release holes on the back to release those larger pieces like this you can also bring in a specific brush or an old toothbrush just to release those pieces and once your die is clean that will help you get the best cut also because if you are trying to cut with this and you've got paper stuck in there the die isn't going to be able to get into your cardstock enough as well as that, if you're using new dies, you'll often find there's some tape on the back and this is going to prevent you from being able to get even pressure throughout your die cutting. So always make sure you remove any sticky tape that's on the back of your die before you do your die cuts. So once we're actually die cutting, this is one of my favourite tips um, and it's actually the positioning of the die inside the machine. So let me just show you, if I put my die inside my machine with the paper in first, so let's remove that top plate, and this works on virtually any die cutting machine. So I'll put my paper in first, my die sitting on top. At this stage if you want to, you can use a little bit of low tack tape just to hold your die in place and let's just run this through the machine as it is sitting in the center of the plate now the majority of this has cut away nicely but I have an area across the top here that's what we call ghosted so uh, it's not as dark as the rest of the lines so the paper hasn't actually cut through properly in fact if I try to just take a pokey tool here and press through this design that's not going to release now you can cut this way first if you want to and then check your die and see whether everything's going to come away by looking at the reverse but one tip for you is just to simply cut the other way round and what I mean by that is if we bring our plates back take this top plate away again we're going to place this back in with the metal down on the base plate and the paper on top instead so you'll need to tack this down before you put it into the machine and let's run this through again this way round and see what the difference is there so now we've got a much better cut so if you just start by cutting this with your paper down on top of your die you're going to get all of these pieces all of this detail cut away first time and as you can see everything just falls away beautifully when you're working with a larger die like this you may find sometimes that some areas won't quite cut let me just show you what I mean by that so let's place this die I'm going to tack it down onto some paper first into our machine we're going to die cut upwards as I just said to get the best possible cut but I'm going to put it in straight okay so we have the perfect square there at right angles to the plate and let's run that through now you'll feel quite a lot of pressure as we go over the straight bar at the top and then again at the base and you might get a clunk as your rollers go over the last part of the die 
Now if we take a close look at this we can see the two sides have cut beautifully. The top and the bottom haven't done. Now this is nothing to do with the die, this is just the positioning in the machine. The reason for this is as this goes through the rollers, your rollers are having to spread the pressure across all of this part of your die all at once. Now only parts of that die are going to be able to cut through. As we move down to this area, the roller pressure is being concentrated on these two areas, so that's fine, there's plenty of pressure there. And then as we come back over this large area again all at once, we're struggling here again. So what you'd probably usually do is twist this and put it back through your machine again in the opposite direction at a 90 degree angle. There's a way round this. Let me show you. Popping this die back onto the same sort of cardstock as I cut last time so that we've got a fair comparison, I'm just going to trim off the excess. The reason being that I want to pop my die into the plate diagonally. So I'm going to put it again upwards and I'm going to place it in the machine. So this is the shape of our die. The reason being for this is as the roller comes over the die, it doesn't have one large area to concentrate on at any one time. It's just got those two sides as it works all the way along the die again. And as we saw earlier, the two side pieces do cut beautifully on their own when they're not all going through at once. So let's run this through and see what the result is this time. That is much, much better. If I just release this, we can really see the detail has cut on all four edges of the die. Now this works particularly well when you do have a frame shape die. I can see all the details cut out lovely there. So when you've got an outer frame and you've got lots of straight edges that you're trying to cut, put them through your machine at a diagonal angle and you'll get a much better cut. Now some dies just have a lot of detail and they are more difficult to cut. This is where I would bring in my um, a secret ingredient as such and that is a metal shim. Now this is a thin metal shim that was supplied with one of my A5 die cutting machines years ago. It's really just a piece of quite strong tin. Um, it's made for die cutting pri primarily um, thick materials, things like fabric with your mixed media dies you can cut against the metal to get a nice clean cut through a fabric that would otherwise fray but I would definitely recommend using this if you have any sort of die that has a lot of close detail and that you're, you are really really struggling to cut this is particularly good if you're cutting large panel dies and getting that issue so let's run this through with we can take the excess away now but we can run this through with the metal shim now and see the difference So just putting the metal shim on top of the die so that the cutting blades of the die can press into the metal as they go through the cardstock. This is going to give the die a much harder surface to cut against and allows you a better cut. Now you may find with your machine, if it's manual, this is a little bit harder to run the die through. So you might need a little more arm strength, a little more pressure. But as you can see there now, everything has cut absolutely beautifully. We have no ghosting at all and I can see all of the detail has cut away. And if I start releasing this, all of those little pieces are going to start falling out. Now these metal shims are made to go with your die cutting machines. So don't worry, they're not going to damage the blades of your dies. Now, if you don't have a metal shim, another option is to use good old-fashioned cardstock. So you can provide yourself a shim just for the area that isn't cutting, and it's best to tear this. So just take a piece of cardstock, say uh, between sort of 180 and 250 GSM, it's not an exact science, and just tear the edges as much as possible. So this, these torn edges are going to make sure that you don't have any really straight indentations in your die cut when you've finished. So clean out your die, sometimes just tapping this from a slight height, so maybe from six inches down onto your desk will clean a lot of the excess out. Let's place this back into our die and I'm going to wrap some tape around the die just to keep that in the right place. Now we're going to place this paper shim that we've created over the area that wasn't cutting on the reverse. Now let's run that through once more and see what happens. 
So we are adding extra pressure to the area of the die that really needs it now. So you need to make sure you do one cut initially to find out whereabouts you need that extra pressure. And as we can see here now, everything has cut through beautifully. Don't worry about the single sided tape that you've placed on there. That will all come away onto the reverse of your die cut and you'll have cut through the gap so you won't be left with any visible areas. Let's pop the rest of the die cut out. And just use your pokey tool to remove these pieces and as you can see everything has cut through absolutely beautifully there now. My last tip for you helps to improve your cutting but it also keeps everything neat and tidy. So when you've got a die like this and I can see lots of little pieces are going to come away, I'm going to place this inside a plastic bag. Now this can be some plastic uh, packaging or it can be what I call poly pockets, the little uh, plastic folders that you get when you're at school or at work to put inside ring bind folders. So just popping your die and your paper together in inside one of these and run it through your machine as you usually would. Now that has provided me with a really good cut and as I wiggle this plastic you'll see that that's actually come away and remained intact but the paper inside has cut. So let's now just release this bag. We can reuse this again, there's no holes in it. We could use this maybe two or three times. All of the little pieces, if they were going to come away, would come away inside the bag. So you could keep everything in there. You could actually clean your die inside there simply by leaving it in there and giving it a tap and a shake until all the little pieces come away. And that helps keep everything tidy. But in this case, everything's remained within the die, which is perfect. But we've also got an absolutely perfect cut through on quite a large panel die which is always surprising that it doesn't need a little more help. So that's how I use plastic pockets within my die cutting as well. So hopefully some of these tips have helped you uh, give you some ideas on how to use your dies that maybe you're struggling with, um, how to get to grips with your machine and how it works and makes for better card making all round.